Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to look at observable arrays. We looked at single observable properties and how to bind to these from markup in the visible UI of the app. Observable arrays can also notify other parts of our app when they change. This change could be a reordering of the items, adding or taking away items, or even filtering them based on some condition. In order to make an observable array and add it to our view model, we'll need a series of items, like photos for example. We've gotten some data of the photo set already, like its title and description, but now we need to get the photos themselves. We'll need to make a new request to Flickr to do this, but we already have a lot of the infrastructure in place, so it should be pretty simple. So first of all, we can add a new public method to our app called getPhotos. So we can add this public method directly after the other public method we've got, just to keep them together. And we'll call this one getPhotos. All we need to do inside this method is to set the method option and then make an AJAX request, very similar to the get photo set description method that we added earlier. So this time the method is the get photos method. And remember, this is the Flickr method. And then we can make another AJAX request using our build request URL method. So we can use our build request URL method to get the correct URL based on the new Flickr method name. Way back in an earlier lesson near the start of the course, we added a global function to the window object. Inside this function, we invoked different methods of our application depending on what the method name for the request was. We already added the get photos method to our mappings object, so now we can just go ahead and add this method, and it's called handle photos. So let's add this after the handle details method. Um, we already have a variable in our top level var declaration, and this method will also receive the data passed back by Flickr. So inside this method, we first want to define some variables. We're going to iterate an array returned by Flickr, so we'll need the length of the array. The photo set object returned by Flickr contains the length of the photo array, so we don't have to read the length manually. We just set this to the Y variable for performance, and we can also define an empty array that we can populate inside the loop. And the pattern that I'm using to declare these variables is that any undefined variables go on the first line, and then any variables that we set and actually define with a value are set on single lines following this. And that's a pattern that I always follow. And when you're in the habit of following a pattern like this, it becomes very easy to just look at a line of code and see exactly what it's doing and know exactly what it's doing without having to think too hard about it. So it's a good practice to get into. So now let's add the loop that will process the uh, photos returned by Flickr. So a standard for loop. So inside the loop, we want to create a new model object and get the current object from the array being iterated. So this is one of the variables that we declared but didn't define. So we're just defining this now as an empty object, first of all. And now we can store the current item in the array that's being iterated and we'll set that to the base object, which again, we've already declared, we're just defining it now with a value. We also need to add an additional property to the base object, which is the size of the image as stored in the image size configuration object. So this is one of the properties of our options. And now we can add some properties to the simplified model objects, like the URL for the image and its title. D 
the URL for the image needs to be constructed in a special way, which is why we use a method to do it. We'll add this method in just a moment. Lastly, we can push the new object into the model's array. We're finished in the loop now, and once the loop ends, we should have all of the models in our array, so we can now add it to our view model. We'll store this in a property called photos, and we'll just pass the array directly in. So as I mentioned, the URL property of our models needs to be constructed in a particular way for it to point to the images hosted by Flickr correctly. So let's add this method before we wrap up for today. So the method is called getImageURL, and we'll need to add it to our top level variable declaration because it's a private method. And we'll just add this after our other methods. And this method will receive the model, which will be a photo. And all we want to do is return a string, which is the URL pointing to the image on Flickr. So again, we'll use the array.join technique. So images on Flickr are stored in a farm and the ID of the farm that a given image is stored in is part of the property of each photo that's returned by Flickr. So we can just get the farm easily from the model that we pass in. And we also need to get the server that the farm is on. And again, that is a property of each photo passed back to us by Flickr. And next we need the ID of the photo. So again, that is passed back to us by Flickr for each of the photos in the photo set. So as you can see, we're constructing this URL in a very particular way, and it needs to be in this exact format so that it retrieves the image from Flickr correctly. So now we're using the size property. If you remember, we added this to the base objects ourselves manually based on the image size that we want to retrieve by default, which is stored in the defaults object and in the options object. Okay, that should be correct. Good. So now we should add the observable array itself and it can start off with an empty value. So in our init function down at the bottom here, in the view model, we can just add a new property and this will be called photos and it will be an observable array. So just like observables, this is a special function that is part of the global KO object, which Knockout sets up for us. And initially it can just be empty. So we don't pass anything into the function. So we've got one issue left to overcome and that is actually making the request to get the photos. If we make the request in the init function, the second request will overwrite the method option of our app, so the title and description data will be passed to the wrong method. Due to how the function invoked by Flickr has to be attached to the window object in order to work, we can't really make use of jQuery's when method, but we can easily create our own promise object and resolve it ourselves in the handle details method. So first of all, we should create a new deferred object. We can do this in the init function. And this will be a jQuery deferred object. And the deferred method will return a deferred object for us. And we just save that in the promise property of our application. So now after the initial request, we can add a handler that waits for the promise to be resolved and then invokes a callback function. So the initial request is get photo set details. So after this, we can say uh, $.when that.promise, then call the get photos method. So it's quite straightforward. So the last thing we need to do at the end of the handle details method, which is here, 
we just want to resolve our promise object. So the resolve method is automatically added to deferred objects for us by jQuery. So we can just invoke that once we've processed the data and that will then make the second request. So now that we're requesting the photo data from Flickr and adding the data to our view model, we should now be able to use any of Knockout's special observable array methods. These are similar to the standard JavaScript functions that can be called on regular arrays, except that they're much more cross-browser compatible. We'll look at these methods in more detail later in the course, but to check everything's working, we can use one of them to pull out the last item in our observable array. So let's just do that down at the end of our init function here. And let's try it out in a browser. And it says undefined, so something is not quite right. We probably want to move this console log actually because at this point, the second request probably won't have been made. So let's do it at the, let's do it at the end of the handle photos method. Let's go back to the browser and try that again. And you can see that we have an object now. So this has been popped out of the observable array and it just has a URL and a title property. Great. So in this lesson, we requested the actual photos from Flickr and added the data that was returned to an observable array stored in our view model. We saw that an observable array can be monitored by other parts of our application and notified when the array changes in some way. We also saw how we can use jQuery's promise API to make the second request to Flickr only once the first request has completed. In the next lesson, we'll see how we can bind some markup to the observable array, which is updated when the items in the array change. Thanks for watching.